his experience was it? was inspiring. <laughs> up there. Should massage your feet while you Yes, they should. Sure. So you 
go.
please rise. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants, for whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, establish the Paschal mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance. And his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted, 
but he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes, we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to slaughter, or a sheep before the shears. He was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of the people. A grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers. Though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life. And the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light and fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. But 
my trust is in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and of my persecutors. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you who hope in the Lord. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you.
The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and spoke to them. Whom are you looking for? Jesus the Nazarene. I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. Whom are you looking for? Jesus the Nazarene. I told you that I am, so if you are looking for me, let this man go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Put your sword into his cupboard. Shall I not drink the cup that the father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid, who was the gatekeeper, said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold, and they were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather, and in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus. Is this the way you answer the high priest? If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, You, you are, are not, not one, one of his disciples, disciples are, you? are you? I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them. What charge do you bring against this man? 
If he were, if he were not a criminal, we would, we would not have handed him over to you. you. Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. We do not have the right to execute anyone. The Jews said this in order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? Do you say this on your own or have others told you about me? I am not Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom, it's, my kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants will be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. Then you are a king. You say I am a king. For this I was born, for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth, listen to my voice. What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews. I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Not, Not this, this one, one, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak, and they came to him. Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him repeatedly once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him. Take him and crucify him yourselves. I find no guilt in him. We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now, when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, if you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement. In Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said, to the Jews. Behold your king. Take, take him away, take, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We, we have, have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus, the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. 
Now, many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but then he said, I am the king of the Jews. What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's, Let's not, not tear it, it but cast lots for it to, to see whose it will be. In order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up, up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth so that you also may come to believe. For this happened, so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, 
weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with the burial cloths along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, everyone. It's good to see so many of you here. And I never in my born days saw two readers come up at once. <laughs> so there's something very good going on. In the hills above Jerusalem, there's a little chapel. It's called Dominus Flavit. Dominus Flavit. For those of you who have been to Jerusalem, you've been in it, I'm sure. It's very small, but it looks right out at the dome, that golden dome. And it was at that point where Jesus said sometime before his passion, I wanted so much that you would all come to me, that you would see me as your savior. I wanted to hold you like a mother hen would hold her chicks under her wings. But she didn't come. And Dominus Flavit means the, Lord's, the Lord wept, he cried, because he wanted so bad to have his people realize who he was. And what the Father wanted him to do, it didn't happen. There's a spot up on the uh, nature trail where the sky steps are. And it's a place that you can sit there and you can look at the whole valley from down where the roundhouse is for the railroad up to the bend in the river where things get out of sight. A young man stopped by while I was sitting on the bench there. and For some reason, he said, I'd like to talk to you. He didn't know who I was. I didn't know who he was. When he found out I was a priest, then he really got into it. <laughs> it was one, one of those things where he was so intent on talking about religion and philosophy. He said, I don't have any use for religion. All I feel important is spirituality and being close to God. And I said, you got a good start there. You got a very good start. But there's something more to it than just the spirituality, which is so important. But it's everybody else. And I imagine Jesus standing beside us and looking at the valley and saying, I wish that they would all know. I wish that they could all come and recognize how much I want to save them. And I want to give them the Father's love. And he said, the young man said, yeah, there's something to that, but religion's starting all these wars. Look at Ukraine, look at all the places and the Jewish people and the Palestinians. And I said, yeah, we're all human, aren't we? But somehow Jesus is still standing right beside us, beside me and the young man. And he's looking out at the valley and he's saying, I wish they'd all come. I wish they'd know the Father's love. Because for him, it meant everything in the world. That's why he went through what we're talking about tonight. What Kevin talked about, Father Kevin talked about last night, 
of how Jesus put himself below his apostles to wash their feet. And now, one step more to die on the cross, the most ignominious way of death there was. So he showed that he was putting himself under the whole world. He was truly a servant, truly the one who was giving his life for everyone. The young man left after a while. I guess he got tired of talking about stuff. You know how that goes. But, but he was, he, made, he said something really important. He said, well, look down there. We're all, we're all swimming in the same pond, he said. The metaphor was kind of odd because there's, there's a hog's back and there's parents, they look like desert, you know. But he had that image of a pond in his mind. He says, we're all in it and some of us are doing the backstroke, some of us are doing the butterfly, some of us are doing the dog paddle and some of us are sinking and we need each other and I said, that's religion. <laughs> That's religion. You got it in you already, my friend. Because religion means being tied together as a community, as a group of people who know that God loves them and they hope to love God the same and their neighbor. That's religion. Jesus died for that. And he gave his life for that. And the young man, he'll know it. He knows it already. But he just has to put it into practice. We all need to help each other, whether we're swimming in the pond or whether we're working in Durango. It's a place that Jesus loves. And he loves everybody in it, no matter who they are. And he says, I wish you'd come. I wish you'd come to understand my love for you and the love of the Father for all of us. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that, leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. Almighty and ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy that your church spread throughout the world, they persevere in steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our most holy father, Pope Francis, 
that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you, their Maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for our Bishop Stephen, all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty and ever-living God, to sh to by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and gathered, bear our humble prayer, excuse me, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Jesus our Lord. Almighty, ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of your catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth, to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty, ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let 
us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty, ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty, ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right, with sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Almighty and everlasting God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest. Grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you and so in gladness confess you, the one true God, the Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty and ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and freedom of religion 
may through your gift be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loose in fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty everlasting God, Comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil. May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, glory are yours now and forever. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Brothers, sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. John, the body of Christ. Kevin, the body of Christ. I believe I'm about to see more.
Almighty, ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ. Preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for a blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in their hope of the resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Yes. We will depart in silence. You can reverence the cross as you would normally genuflect on your way out. Say hello to